Good morning everybody, Jeanette here. We're on our way over to pick up half a hog today. We have a deal with an Amish friend of ours who raises hogs and he slaughters the hog and he cuts it in half and then as a favor for us and we go over and we just get half the hog and take it home to our house and cut it up, put it in the freezer, can it, do whatever we're going to do with it. We had to stop by the pharmacy and I just happened to think if we were at the window and if somebody uh, in there who was helping me knew I had half a pig in the back of my van they'd probably freak out we backed the van up here to the patio and we're, we've got to fight the dog off and get the pig carried into the house We're actually butchering this pig in the comfort of our living room. It's too cold to be outside right now with our hands in cold uh, pig meat. So um, we've set up a table here in our living room and we are going to do it right here. I will tell you that we are far from experts at doing this. We don't have any kind of a electric meat saw and uh, any kind of equipment to do proper cuts like making pork chops. For the most part we cut the meat off of the bones and package it up in size packages that is for two people for the most part. Sometimes we'll package it in bigger packages that will feed our extended family but uh, for the most part we just cut it up into sizable pieces and put it in the freezer. The first thing we do is take the loin out and the loin is right the muscle that runs right up and down the back uh, the back of the pig it's a round piece of meat like that that's like cylinder shaped down through there and so I, that's the first thing I'm gonna do is take my butcher knife and cut that out again I want to tell you I'm not a professional at this and somebody's probably gonna think I'm horrible butcher but that's the way it is for me I will cut down here and until I hit bone I'm actually used to working on a pig that's warm um, and this pig's been hanging outside in freezing temperatures all night so Cut down along where the ribs are toward the backbone. Try to release that loin down through there. First thing I'll do is take this back leg off of here. Try to get down through there to find the place where the joint would be. I've located the hip joint down in here, so I'm trying to cut it apart. I finally got the uh, ham joint cut off of the main body here. But next I'm going to go working on the loin. And there's one that runs on each side of the spine. But of course, since I only bought half a pig, then I only get one loin. So you have to cut that away from the body of the pig down to the ribs, all the way up through, and then away from the spine on this side. That's what I'm going to be doing next.
So here's what I cut out of the back muscle of that pig. It's, it's still got to be trimmed, but you can see this lighter pink meat is the loin. The darker meat is not considered part of the loin, but I don't actually know what you call it. But uh, I'll probably trim that off and put it in the sausage because we need lots of sausage meat and we like quite a bit of fat in our in our sausage too in order to make it really good. So I'm going to follow along where I can see a difference. See if you look down in there, you can see a little separation place between the, the loin meat and that chunk of fat right there. So I'm going to follow that around down the length of it and on around to separate the loin chunk. So yeah, that's coming out of there. This is the same way that you would do a deer or a sheep or a goat to cut the loin out. You gotta make sure you keep your fingers out of the way so you don't slice into them. Okay, so there's my loin. I'm going to probably cut it up into pieces about like that for the two of us. So I'll get several pieces through there. While I'm on this side of the table cutting the loin pieces up, old guy's going to be over there putting them in Ziploc bags so that we can get them in the freezer. Next, I'm going to start cutting on this ham. I'm just going to cut down to the bone. Around the bone, I guess, because I kind of missed the bone. And then start cutting off chunks. Kind of as simple as that. <laughs> it's, uh, we're not fancy around here, but that meat's going to taste as good as any meat that was done in a fancy way. Something like this that has just too much fat on it, I will slice it off. I did a three-part video once of rendering lard over an open fire. And this is how I got the, the fat that I rendered down, is trimming like this. And then I stored it in the freezer until I was ready to do the rendering of the lard.
got the big chunks of meat cut off of this ham bone. And I could stand here and nitpick all these little pieces of meat off and add them to this pile that I've got here of smaller pieces off there for sausage making. But what I like to do is just take the bone with still quite a bit of meat on it and put it in my oven and roast it. And that meat on there is really good, cooked on the bone and, and nicely roasted in the oven. So that's what I'll do with the rest of that. This piece right here is the upper part of the ham and the back end of the loin. You can see this lighter color here. This is still part of the loin, but I'm going to just uh, take this one piece and cut it up into a couple different pieces and not try to separate the loin out of it. It's all good meat and it'll all be good cooked into a, a roast or chopped up for soup or whatever it is we choose to do with it. But I do need to trim quite a bit of fat off. This was a pretty fat pig. It wasn't The pig wasn't all that big, but it, it was pretty fat, which is good. We like a fat pig. I've got the back leg and the loin taken care of, so the next thing I'll do is take this front leg off of here. Um, what I'm going to do with it is primarily cut it up into pieces to make sausage because I or ground. I, I won't necessarily uh, season it as sausage, but I really like having ground pork available for me. And go up around, see if I can locate the shoulder blade because I've got to go around that. Get this thing off of here. Well, I've got the front leg cut off and I'm working on getting the meat cut off of it. It has this big shoulder blade piece here that I, is more difficult to work around. The back leg doesn't have that. Here I want to show you the difference between the front leg, which is this, and the back leg, this one. The back leg with a ham is, is it's all just very straight forward. It's got like two joints maybe. Maybe just one joint, and you know, that one hooks on. But this front leg has a lot of different angles and parts to it. This is the shoulder blade. And in the shoulder blade, it has this piece of bone sticking out that you have to cut around both sides. And then it's got a joint here, and this is down at the, the knee joint. So it's a lot harder to cut the front leg up into good sizable pieces. And that's why I like to just cut it into smaller pieces and use it in the grinder to make ground pork. Along the ribs, on the outside of the ribs, is a layer of meat and fat that kind of resembles bacon. And that's what I have actually used the, that for, is bacon. You can um, prepare it with your, it's called Morton's Tender Quick, and, and it just acts like bacon. So uh, that's, what I'm going to take off next is this outer layer of meat and fat that looks like bacon from the ribs underneath. I've separated that meat from the ribs. Down here is the ribs. You can see the, the outline of the ribs there. And I'm just working through and cutting this meat off as I go out toward the belly of the hog. Down here behind the ribs is actually the bacon part. So I'm going to cut that off right at the back of the ribs. It's still attached to the rib meat, but I'm going to cut that off. And I'm going to treat all of this as if it was all belly meat or bacon meat. I'm going to turn it all into bacon. Got it done. Well, I forgot actually about the tenderloin. This is the tenderloin underneath. It's on the inside of the body cavity, right 
by the uh, the ribs. So I'll have to take that out there. Some people think that's the, the best part. And this fat right along here, I believe, is called leaf fat. L-E-A-F. Leaf. It's uh, just pure fat, no meat. Particles involved with that. This is the next section here. This is the ribs right here. And then up here is the neck. And there's still a lot of good meat on the neck. So I work at getting that off of there and put that in the with the sausage meat. Just what I do is hack, hack and hack. If there's meat there, I cut it up. And if it's something I want to save as a roast, then that's fine. If it's not something I want to save as a roast, then I will put it in to be ground up. This is actually part the neck part of the of the loin. That's a good part of the meat, but it will be good in the ground meat too. We've got one of these big bowls full of meat that I've uh, cut up into size that will fit into the grinder. At this point today we are going to just put those in gallon Ziploc bags because I want to grind them at a separate time. I want to do a video about them and I want to get some casings for stuffing the sausage into and I need to go to the store and buy some of them. package what's in there this contains loin and then I write the month and the year that I packaged this up when I was young and used to uh, butcher something or put something in my freezer I thought it wasn't important to put the year on but as I grew older I realized that it is important because you find a package in there that maybe doesn't even have anything on there and you wonder when was this done how old is it or anything it's just a, a little Safety, safety measure to put the month and the year. No question then. Well, I'm down to the ribs here and I've got this big backbone area here that needs to be taken off. And then like the breast bone area here that needs to be taken off. What I'm gonna use is this meat cleaver and hopefully hack it off in, a, in, a, in an appropriate kind of way. like a chopped up kind of way so that's what I took off you know that's it's would be a lot of work to get any meat off of that it could be cooked down uh, when you buy a slab of ribs mostly this is all taken off here and then the backbone is taken off and you just have this section right here of it. So I, now I'm going to try to take the the spine part off and see how it goes for me. <laughs> you turn around this way. Okay, I think I'm going to have to resort to the, the meat saw. If, if I was in a butcher shop, they would have a, a band saw that would just zip this right off. But since I don't have that, I have to uh, do it the best way I can. And it, I'll tell you what, it's not easy. I haven't found an easy way yet to get this chunk of bone off of the ribs. We've got a meat saw here that uh, is decent. It's kind of hard to work with, but especially when you're trying to work with slippery meat. But I didn't have much luck with the meat cleaver, so now I'll work on this for a while. There's that dreaded chunk of spine that I wanted to get off these ribs, and we finally did it. The best way we'd found to do it was to use the meat saw. The meat saw and two people working at it 
one holding and one cutting is seemed like it was the best way to get those things cut apart. So here's the belly and rib meat. It looks kind of like there are ribs in there, but it's only the meat cut off of the ribs. And I'm going to treat all of this as if it were bacon. First, I'm going to cut it up into sections, kind of like that, maybe four sections. And then I'm going to cure it in Morton's Tender Quick. When I'm ready to have bacon, I'll take one of the packages of my bacon out and thaw it. And while it's still a little bit frozen, I will cut, uh, start, slice it. I slice it so I'm cutting across the grain uh, so that my bacon can be tender and I can eat it. If you cut it with the grain, it's all stringy and, and tough. So when you slice your bacon, make sure that you cut it across the grain. I get this uh, at my local Amish uh, bulk food store. That's the best place I can find to get it. And I, the way I do it is I'm, I'll mix it in water and, and keep them in a five gallon bucket where it's cold for several days. And then I take it out, wash it off, and freeze it. I had uh, almost four cups of Tender Quick, and so I'm dissolving that in one gallon of water. What's recommended is uh, one part Tender Quick to four parts water. So I needed 16 cups of water for my four cups of Tender Quick, which is one gallon. So then I'm going to maybe start with the biggest piece and lay it down in there. Okay, now I'm gonna find something and hold to hold the uh, meat down in the water, like a, lay a plate on top of that with a weight of some kind. I'm going to set it outside. We're having a lot of cold weather right now, so I'm just going to set it outside, protect it from any my, the cat or the dog, and let it cure for two or three days, and then I'll take it out, rinse some of the salt off because it's going to be fairly salty, and then I'll put it in freezer bags. Uh, and I'll have five packages of bacon there. Okay, I pushed a plate down there in the water, and I think that that's going to keep it all submerged. And but I am going to put a lid on top of this bucket. Now that wraps it up, except for the cleanup. It's not too big of a mess, but it's always a little bit of a greasy mess to try to clean up. So thanks for joining us on our latest adventure. We'll see you next time. Bye.